Well, thank you very much, and uh, thank you for inviting me to this, uh, this uh, summit. It's uh, wonderful to see so many people here. Um, first of all, like Bridget, I have a foot in Australia's two greatest and most livable cities. In my case, I'm the Melbourne boy that married the uh, Adelaide girl. Um, and I've been coming here since the 1980s and have a strong connection with the city here and have seen the development of the Glenelg Tram. Indeed, my in-laws uh, tell me stories of them dating on the Glenelg Tram, possibly back in the 40s, I guess. And, and, and you know, when you think about it, uh, you wouldn't get that kind of activity taking place on, on another mode of transport, such as a bus. Um, they're, 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 um, they're invisible, they're smelly, and uh, they get in the way of everything, let's face it. So, um, tramways. Tramways, Bridget, I'm with you. EY, as already been said, is a leading infrastructure advisor here to governments in Australia, and we're the largest team uh, nationally, and currently I'm the partner that's been leading the Capital Metro, Capital Metro project in the ACT government. We also advised on the Sydney Light, Light Rail project for New South Wales government. Uh, we were with the winning bidder on Gold Coast. Hobart's been mentioned and we've done business cases in Newcastle, uh, Perth, and I think Parramatta as well. Um, we've delivered both business cases and transaction support with Sydney Light Rail closed and CMA to close early next month. My presentation will focus on light rail delivery issues and models. It also briefly touches on funding and financing, acknowledging that uh, my colleague Joe here is going to talk much more detail about uh, funding and in relation to value capture. Our work on other projects supports South Australia, state governments, benefits of expanding Adelaide's light rail network. Key benefits aren't just transport. I think we must remember and acknowledge this. Light rail, above all other modes of transport, is really about urban renewal and densification of our inner cities, revitalising urban areas and particularly CBDs. It attracts investments, it boosts economic growth and encourages urban renewal and jobs creation. It brings residents back into the city centres and visitors alike. It revitalises CBDs and importantly um, grows demand for inner city, uh, inner, inner urban housing. There's great alignment here between governments with Commonwealth with their renewed interest in funding public transport and it also aligns with government's increasing focus on cities and cities as, as an agenda, including livability and carbon, uh, carbon reduction in our cities. Let's get this straight. Light rail is not about just transport. So let's get into delivery model frameworks and, and also a case study. There are many options and, in, and it's important to build uh, the strategy for procurement of light rail upon two very fundamental things. The first one is the unique characteristics of the project. For example, you have greenfield considerations versus brownfield. You might have existing operations as you do here in, in, in Adelaide, uh, e either under public control or in course in Melbourne under private control, the nature of the alignment, the disruption to other transport modes, and Bridget talked extensively about uh, the issues to do with Sydney Light Rail and my word, uh, you know, closing George Street and doing what they're doing in Sydney, it cannot be underestimated the complexity of what that involves and particularly with the underground uh, environment with services and utilities. Um, and those constraints, particularly around utilities and services locations, really needs to be factored into the thinking. And secondly, risks, the risks inherent in the project, the identification of those risks and whether they are better to be managed and controlled by the private or the uh, public sector. And there are various options shown on this diagram. This diagram illustrates a framework for thinking about those options of how 
light rail and heavy rail have been delivered uh, both here in Australia but also uh, elsewhere. Now, when it's come to light rail here in Australia, it has tended to be, um, the recent projects have tended to be greenfield projects and they have tended to fall into the PPP category and the de design, construct, maintain and operate form of uh, delivery. But that's not uh, the case, for example, in my home city of Melbourne, where we have, we have separation and we have uh, private operations, but essentially public ownership of the infrastructure below. So turning to a case study, uh, Capital Metro, project objectives here, urban renewal, densification in, rapidly growing, in a rapidly growing city, and light rail as a city shaping exercise. Notice that I haven't said public transport. I've said all of the things that light rail catalyzed, catalyzes. And a key point here, and it's been said already, but communications, because in Canberra, like elsewhere, the vocal minority that uh, the naysayers, they tend to be mobilized and they tend to be very active in the media and in public, uh, public forums. Whereas uh, the silent majority, and our, our studies in Canberra do demonstrate there is a silent majority who are for light rail, uh, but it's very difficult to get them to advocate. One of the things we did in Canberra was to, and it's rather uncomfortable for me to say this, was uh, the government chose to disclose the full business case, uh, an EY document disclosed to public discourse. Rather uncomfortable for us, of course, because we get drawn into public debate, which we, we, we as a professional services firm, are uh, not, not uh, always familiar with. Recommended option here was an availability-based PPP. The primary driver for this was heightened price certainty, optimal risk allocation, driving innovation to meet customer urban design and affordability requirements. And very importantly for a jurisdiction like the ACT government, where a $100 million project is a, is a very, uh, very uh, expensive and difficult undertaking, we're talking about a, a, a nearly a billion dollar project here, which really uh, was, was perhaps above and beyond the capability of the government to deliver itself. And so it needed to partner through a PPP arrangement. And that PPP arrangement incorporates all the major light rail components, the design, construct, operate, maintain, finance, and rolling stock delivery. And the big issue here, as in Sydney, utilities relocation, you cannot overestimate the need to deal with underground services, the, um, the need to identify those, to plan for their relocation, to be discussing that with utilities companies and then, as Bridget said, when you think you've done all the work, think again and uh, continue to plan and continue to think about how that risk is going to be discharged through a procurement process. Land development in the case of uh, Capital Metro is carved out. Uh, land development is a significant contributor to the funding of this project not only because of the land opportunity along Northbourne Avenue and the ownership of that land being largely in government, but also for the recycling, uh, the asset recycling program of Commonwealth government. So we're able here to demonstrate that the recycling of social, infrastructure, of social housing infrastructure uh, along the pathway and the realisation of significant benefits in land development actually attracted quite a significant Commonwealth government contribution to the project under the Commonwealth Government's asset recycling. I'm just going to cover briefly funding versus financing. Note, he, noting here that the size of the, um, uh, the South Australian local governments in this case is much smaller than say in the case of the ACT government which is both kind of local government and also has some state government uh, responsibilities and authority and also the Gold Coast where you have a you know, single, single local government and indeed in the case of Sydney where, where, where uh, the bringing together of state and local government it's, it's kind of single entities. I acknowledge here that it's a little bit more complicated because you've got 
a, a number of local governments that this, uh, this development is going to impact. And that impact has got to be really designed in when considering funding uh, via value capture, which my colleague Joe will talk more about. Also, more, um, more jurisdictions involved um, that, that they're likely to need to be a coalition of state, local government and, and federal government and there is sense in bringing that coalition together at an early stage and, and there is sense in designing a value capture and funding contribution mechanism that's commensurate with the value that will flow through to those jurisdictions and also to the citizens involved. And I don't underestimate the design challenge in, in doing that. So funding and financing uh, are often um, confused terms. They're used interchangeably in the media. And I'm, a, uh, I'm not normally an advocate for strict, strict English, um, but here I am. I think we need to be talking about financing and funding uh, in their strictest terms because they're very different and it's very important to be very clear about them. Funding is the income and or revenue that is used over time to pay for the infrastructure. That payment includes the financing component. That is the capital raised, usually up front, to invest in the light rail. Importantly, finance, whether it's from the public or the private sector, is commercial and it must be repaid. Finance isn't an issue in Australia. We're very lucky. There's plenty of money around, plenty of money available in the market to invest in the right kinds of projects. It's funding that is the problem. Funding is a very different matter, and light rail can't, can't generate enough revenues itself through Fairbox to support financing. And so we need a strategy for a funding package which will enable the financing to proceed. The good news is that financing is getting cheaper. There's no doubt that after the um, global financial crisis. Australia was the only place in the world that had a financial crisis. Everywhere else had a recession. Um, we did, did nevertheless experience the high cost of the financial crisis in 08. The good news is that the cost of finance is coming down dramatically and it continues to fall. And the recent cost on CMA, I can't disclose that to you, it's, it's commercial in confidence, but I can, I can say that the recent cost, the margins, are heading downwards. So Adelaide's in a great position to exploit the low cost of finance as long as it gets a commensurate funding package in place. The issue here, though, is that we're held hostage by banks. Uh, we don't have uh, deep capital markets uh, in Australia. As a consequence, our banks are lending short to match with their wholesale funding sources of their finance. So we have seven year, seven, five, five to seven year terms on loans to these projects and that it does introduce a refinancing component to the equation. Just turning a little bit to funding mechanisms, I know, no, I've already noted that Joe Langley will, is speaking in greater depth on this. But it's important to get the concept right, and this is reinforcing what I said earlier on, and that is that value capture is a means of funding a project. It's a means of translating the benefits of a project into a form which can be supported, that can support financing. In essence, the principle is that the kind of government intervention results in the creation of value or uplift for a range of beneficiaries. Remember I spoke earlier and other speakers have spoken about the, uh, the, the broader benefits of light rail. They haven't spoken about fare box. They haven't spoken about user pays. They've spoken about development opportunities, land development opportunities, realizing the potential of city generation. That creates significant value, and it's a question of how we capture that value and share it with those beneficiaries. It's not about, um, it's not about ripping 
um, profits from developers. It's about acknowledging that without light rail, these development opportunities wouldn't exist, and it's only fair that the beneficiaries should share in the upside and create a win-win situation whereby that fun funding can be created that translates into the capital investment required for the project. And here's an example, because value capture is often talked about in Australia. What's often not mentioned is that it's, it's, it's happening. It's been happening for, for decades. Value capture has already been implemented on light rail here in Australia. Stage one of Gold Coast Transit Project included value capture. It's unique in Australia because it's been jointly funded by all three levels of government. So it's been done before, and Adelaide should be, um, should, is in a good position to learn from both the, the, the positives and the negatives that have taken place on these projects. The Gold Coast City Council is contributing around 120 million, and part of its contribution will be sourced from the city transport improvement charge. It can be considered as a broad area-based value capture mechanism that along with the, the charging of user fares improves the alignment of project funding contributions with the tangible benefits that the community receives as a result of investment in this city's transport system. And you've heard the project director speaking about those benefits. Mm -hmm. A unique feature of this approach compared to some systems of value capture that applies overseas is the use of a flat rate levy, $117 per property. This distinguished it from levies such as the one used in Crossrail in London that vary with the value of the property. So maybe there's an opportunity missed there, a flat rate levy versus Crossrail in London which has used a, very, a, a scaled levy um, applicable to the land use and the commercial use of the, the property adjacent to that, that development. And whilst each property owner is required to make a contribution under a low flat rate system, there will be some beneficiaries who receive a benefit that it significantly exceeds their funding contributions. This really reinforces my point about being strategic, about not just designing for alignments and technical solutions, but by designing procurement solutions and funding solutions early on and at the business case in the project. It's notable that although Gold Coast Rapid Transmit made innovative use of an infrastructure levy on households, other potential value capture mechanisms for this project were not developed. For example, bidders for the project were given only limited opportunities to integrate innovative land use and commercial opportunities into the project design and funding packages. So there are opportunities to learn from this experience. The New South Wales government, for example, will part fund the Parramatta Light Rail project with a new development contribution known as the Special Infrastructure Contribution. This will be a $200 per square metre for fourth floor space in new residential developments along the corridor. So if I could just wrap up, there are, there are a couple of, or well, three takeaways that I'd like you to take from what I've been speaking about. The first one is that the delivery model needs very careful design to the project objectives. The unique characteristics and the risks so a profile of the project are the starting points and ultimately whatever procurement model is designed will be unique and it will be unique for Adelaide. Funding is the key issue, not financing. Funding is the key issue. You need a funding strategy and a funding package in order to be able to raise the capital, the finance, and that needs to be very clear. It needs to be commercially aligned between the funds that will be raised to pay for the finance that is used to invest in the infrastructure. And, and many of our projects in Australia so far have really led with the capital investment rather than the funding package. So I, I encourage you as, different, uh, as, a, as the three tiers of government to combine, to consider and design that funding package as, a, as, a, as an early step. And finally, val value, capture, value capture tools are available and they're becoming more sophisticated to generate new funding sources that align the benefits um, on a win-win basis between the beneficiaries of infrastructure and the governments that uh, have to invest in them. 
So thank you for the opportunity to speak to you. I hope that's been useful for you. And um, I look forward to the, uh, to the, to the question time during, uh, during the panel session. Thank you.